The spirit that would spark the construction of the Blue Ridge Railroad and subsequently the Stumphouse Tunnel was alive and far below the company broke ground in 1854. As early as 1835, railroad entrepreneurs discussed a route connecting Charleston to and Tennessee, which would be highly desirable due to the prospect of opening up trade with the burgeoning American West. Railroad ventures had already proved successful in numerous states across the nation, and as construction at Stumphouse Tunnel would prove, no natural barrier would prevent South Carolina entrepreneurs in their attempts. After an evaluation of the Blue Ridge Railroad suggested route by a prominent engineer, Stumphouse Mountain was singled out as a particular obstacle. Due to the difficulty of accurately predicting the expenses that would constitute a subterranean project of such immensity. Despite uncertainties, the Blue Ridge Railway pressed on and in 1852 it received a construction permit to begin work to connect Anderson, South Carolina to Knoxville, Tennessee. Few strides had been made in the physical demands of tunneling since antiquity. The tunnel would be an enormous undertaking with its anticipated length of 5,864 feet and 25 foot high and 17 foot wide. Four shafts had to be built along the length of the tunnel to provide additional work surfaces. Many of the railroad workers came from mining districts of England, Ireland and Germany. A notable number came from the Carolinas and Georgia. Humbert and Hitchcock brought many Irish laborers with them from the north to work on the tunnel. Slave owners did not want to waste their slaves on the dangerous and grueling work. Thus the work went on to immigrants and others who chose to undertake it. In particular, the Irish were seen as physically suited to the task, though white Carolinians viewed them as unfortunately troublesome people. The wages paid to the workers varied in 1857 from $1.19 to $1.62 per day, depending on the worker's job. The settlement of Tunnel Hill formed at the summit of Stump Hill Mountain to house the workers and their families. By the late 1850s, there were roughly 600 men working on the railway, a majority of which were Catholic, and another 1,200 living nearby in the village. The town had the required boarding houses for the laborers, but it also boasted a hotel, bars, multiple stores, and even a saloon. Upon seeing the large Catholic population, Father J.J. O'Connell came to the area to minister and hold services. Although he was not a local resident, he helped establish a Catholic school for children and sought to vanquish the stereotype of angry, drunk Irishmen by establishing a temperance society. The tunnel and its surroundings would serve as a microcosm for the greater regional, ethnic, and religious divides that plagued the rest of the country. While Father O'Connell's increasing influence in the community would quell the Irish infighting, he could do little to prevent the centuries-old resentment between the Catholics and the Protestants that would unfold at the site. Stumphouse and surrounding mountains were fraught with natives, the poor descendants of European Protestants who had retreated to the hills. Though the natives resented the railroads for all its encroachment, they focused a particular form of hatred upon the well-paid Catholic tunnelmen. In 1859, Stumphouse Tunnel was facing an uncertain future, as further construction of the railway was doubtful. Blue Ridge Railway made multiple efforts to raise public support for the railroad, but to no avail. Money was running out, but before more fundraising could take place, civil war began in Charleston. The construction of the Blue Ridge Railroad ended on December 24, 1859. Only 1,600 linear feet of tunnel remained unfinished. It is possible that the construction of Tunnel Hill would have continued if the Civil War had not started in 1861, diverting the funds and manpower of the state even further. After the war, a few revival attempts were made, though all of them failed. In 1940, a Clemson A&M college professor recognized the po possibilities of curing blue mold cheese in the tunnel. The first Clemson University blue cheese was cured in Stumphouse Mountain Tunnel in 1941. In 1951, Clemson A&M College was successful in purchasing the tunnel. The cheese was manufactured on campus, transported 30 miles and cured in the tunnel. In October 1953, some 2,500 pounds of blue cheese was curing in its depths. 
In January 2007, the city of Walhalla considered selling the property to a Florida developer who intended to turn the property into a gated community. However, the citizens in Walhalla desired to preserve the historical site. Many people volunteered to assist with the fundraising and working with landowners. Citizens also planned and participated in protests and press conferences. Many locals still lament the railroad's unrealized potential. Had the tunnel been seen to completion, it is rumored that the town of Walhalla could have generated enough traffic to be comparable to Atlanta. Far from being an isolated corner of Southern society, the people of the Blue Ridge Railroad Company and their employees experienced the same financial, political, racial, and regional turmoil proliferating throughout the rest of the country. The tunnel's very existence serves as a disruptive piece of evidence in the stereotype Appalachian narrative, exhibiting the economic ambition and engineering capabilities of those in the 19th century South Carolina's upcountry.